Well, Palestinian students, they looked at the American International School as a way to make something out of their lives. Yeah, and now those dreams have been deferred with the school's destruction. CNN's Ben Wiedemann reports now from Gaza. 10,000 books that could take kids out of here. They just threw us back right in. Just threw us back right in. Oh, God, what I would do. Librarian Alia no longer has a library. It and the rest of the American International School of Gaza are no more. Israeli aircraft bombed the school at 2 in the morning on the 3rd of January, destroying it. I am not angry. I am beyond. Let me tell you something. I am beyond. Eight years. This is a school that's been up here for eight years, making a difference. You know what it means to make a difference? People tell you you can, but you know, one person is more than enough. And that's what you learn, and that's what you teach. One kid getting out, making something. Well, I've got 20 kids out, and I could have had more. And this is what they do. Why? Give me one good reason why this happened. Israeli officials say they're looking into the circumstances of the school's destruction. In the past, Palestinian militants have fired rockets at Israel from around the school, and we don't know whether Hamas fighters occupied the school after the Israeli offensive began. But school director Rib Salem, an American citizen, insists rockets have never been fired from inside the grounds. I challenge them to give me one piece of evidence, one single piece of evidence that this school has ever been used to launch rockets. No. The U.S. consulate in Jerusalem told CNN, quote, We're very upset and very sorry to hear about the destruction of the American school in Gaza, end quote. No protest, however, was filed with the Israeli government. I visited the school a year ago. Like Gaza, it has seen its fair share of problems. Staff kidnapped, militants had fired grenades into classrooms at night. But it was a lively, happy place. Its student body a mix of children from well-off families and others on scholarships, including from the U.S. government. It was the only school in Gaza to use a strictly American curriculum and was partially funded by U.S. tax dollars. And now staff and students are asking why their school was destroyed. To be honest with you, I, I have no other explanation than this. The Israelis do not want anything good in Gaza. They don't want anything excellent, anything bright in Gaza. They want Gaza to live in the Middle Ages. School records are now scattered in the rubble. Past transgressions don't seem so important anymore. What is this, a warning? Suspension? Senior Abir Obeid's dreams now on hold. I've missed two deadlines for two universities I wanted to apply to because of this war. And I don't know if I'm going to even get my diploma this year. It's not just a school. It's our houses, our future, our hopes and our hearts. And now their school and everything else is shattered into a million pieces. Well, after the school was destroyed, the Israel, the Israel Defense Forces said that it had been used as a launching base for rockets and was a legitimate target. But in a statement to CNN, they say the incident is still being investigated. And they added, quote, for 22 days, the IDF fought an enemy in Gaza that did not hesitate to hide behind civilians and fire from schools, mosques, and humanitarian and facility, aid, humanitarian aid facilities, I should say. So let's bring in our Ben Wiedemann from Gaza City. Ben, tell us about your experience at the school, because obviously the fact that it is destroyed has left a huge void for the students there. Yeah, certainly, as I said in the report, I'd been there a year ago, and uh, it, it was really quite a very nice school. It was well run, uh, the best school in Gaza by any standard. Uh, the children were happy. They uh, were very excited, obviously, uh, when a television crew showed up. And uh, so it was one of those places in Gaza where you go there and you have hope. You have a feeling that, uh, you know, there are people here and who are really striving to get ahead, make a difference, uh, change their lives. So when I, I came across the school uh, just hours after the Israeli ceasefire went into, into effect, and I saw just the utter damage. I mean, it, the thing is just completely beyond repair. You know, I was, I was shocked. I was obvi obviously already shocked. Uh, just going around Gaza seeing the destruction. On the bright side, Betty, uh, the school is trying to get going again. They're obviously going to have to move 
uh, to different facilities. They're looking for apartment space uh, in the city. They have 220 kids, so they're going to have to uh, find something that's big enough to house all of them, uh, to house the classrooms. Uh, they've lost all their textbooks, which come from the United States. Mm. Uh, so they have to find a way to get those in. They don't have any desks, any tables, uh, but they're trying to get back on their feet. Boy, Ready? it is, uh, does seem like a, quite a challenge and a long road ahead, but uh, judging from the determination there, it's something that will be done. Ben Wiedemann, thanks so much for your time today.